Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Doom Wizard, and it's March 27th, almost April. And I came across a Doomer article written in none other than the Washington Post. Yep, Mr. Bezos and his affiliates thought that this might be an adequate response. Most people are pretty much waking up to the fact that this is a giant uh, lie and fabrication of truth made to disillusion the masses and keep you on the hedonic treadmill. Just keep going with the program, okay? So he contracted Miss Shannon Osaka, kind of a cute girl. Again, I think I've commented on her before, and she wrote an article here. I've already sent this over to um, Mr. McPherson at Nature Bats last. Of course, he saw this like within an hour of it publishing because he's in it along with us. So I'm just going to read it and maybe comment on it a little bit. Speed this up, okay? The title is, and I'm sure many of you have read this already. I'm just reading it for the record and, and commenting, okay? Because this is about us. It's about you. Little meat sauce miracle. Why climate doomers are replacing climate deniers. Reads the headline. And the sub-headline is... How UN reports and confusing headlines create a generation of people who believe climate change can't be stopped. A generation of people? I think several generations of people. Okay, has a cute little illustration here of a fire with skull and earth. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, let's read from the top. When Sean Yora was 26 years old and working as an engineer, he started watching documentaries about climate change. Yura, who was struggling with depression and the loss of a family member, was horrified by what he learned about the melting ice and rising extreme weather. He started spending hours on YouTube watching videos made by fringe scientists who warned that the world was teetering on the edge of societal collapse, or even near-term human extinction. There's that line. Yura started telling his friends and family that he was convinced that climate change couldn't be stopped and humanity was doomed. And in short, he became a climate... Doomer. Doomers. It all compounded and just led me down a very dark path, he said. I became very de detached and felt like giving up on everything. That grim view of the planet's future is becoming more common, influenced by a barrage of grim UN reports, such as the one published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change earlier this week, and negative headlines. Negative headlines. Oh, she must have a, uh, a complex. I, ca I can't resist, guys. I'm sorry. Um, a, a group of people believe that the climate problem cannot or will not be solved in time to prevent all-out societal collapse. They are known colloquially as climate doomers. And some scientists and experts worry that their defeatism, which could undermine efforts to take action, may be just as dangerous as climate denial. It's fair to say that recently many of the climate scientists have spent more time arguing with doomers than with deniers, said Zeke Hausfather a contributing author to the UN Governmental Panel on Climate Change and Climate Change and Climate Research Lead at the payments company Stripe. Oh, he works at Stripe. That's great. There are different flavors of doomers. Some are middle-aged and have been influenced by outspoken scientists like retired ecologist Guy McPherson who claim that human extinction, or at least the breakdown of society, is imminent. I can't imagine that there will be a human left on Earth in 10 years, Ms. McPherson has said. These doomers drift towards conspiracy theories, sometimes claiming that the intergovernmental climate, climate change is downplaying the seriousness of the issue. McPherson said in an email that he's no fan of extinction. So-called green energy based on PV, solar panels, and wind turbines offer no way, to, way out of the ongoing climate emergency. There's a uh, tweet here from the whole shebang LTD saying, uh, the most difficult thing I face being a climate doomer is recognizing the sheer pointlessness of everything that isn't focused on mitigation or limitation. Earning money to pay bills seem utterly ludicrous. I should be growing veg and collecting rainwater. Yeah. Others are young people active on social media who have become demoralized by years of negative headlines. Since about 2019, I believe that there's nothing to little to nothing we can do to reverse climate change on a global scale. Charles McBride, a TikToker, said in a video last year, the origins of doomism stretch far back. McPherson, for example, has been predicting the demise of human civilization for decades, but the mindset 
seems to have been markedly more on mainstream in the past five years. Jacqueline Gill, a climate scientist at University of Maine, says that in 2018 she started hearing different sorts of questions when she spoke to panels or d did online events. And I started getting emails from people saying, I'm a young person, is there even a point in going to college? Will I ever be able to grow up and have kids, she said. Well before the coronavirus pandemic, a few factors combined to make 2018 feel like the year of doom. 2015, 16, and 17 had just been the three hottest year on records. Climate protests had begun to spread across the globe, including Greta Thunberg's school strike and the UK-based protest group known as Extinction Rebellion. In the academic world, British professor of sustainability Jim Bendell wrote a paper called Deep Adaptation, which urged readers to, compare, to prepare for inevitable near-term societal collapse due to climate change. And then United Nations issued a special report on 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming, released in October 2018, which kicked many people's climate anxiety into to overdrive. The report, which focused on how an increase of 1.5 degrees C from pre-industrial averages might compare to 2C, included grim predictions like death of the world's coral reefs and ice-free summers in the Arctic, but a central message took many took from the report that there were only 12 years left to save the planet, which wasn't even in the report. It came from a Guardian headline. Three of the four pathways to the report starting charted for limiting warming to 1.5 C, the world would have to cut carbon dioxide emissions from to 40 to 60% by 2030. We have 12 years to limit ca climate catastrophe, the Guardian reported, and others outlets soon followed. The phrase became an activist rallying cry. Quote, 12 years to save the planet was actually, we have 12 years to cut global emissions in half to stay consistent with 1.5C, Hall's father explained. Then 12 years to save the planet becomes interpreted as public as, if we don't stop climate change in 12 years, something catastrophic happens. It was really a game of telephone, he added. Hall's father said the problem is that climate targets, say the goal to limit 1.5, has have become interpreted by the public as climate thresholds, which could would drive the planet into a hothouse state. In fact, scientists don't believe there's anything unique about the temperature that will cause runaway tipping points. The landmark IPCC re report merely aimed to show the risks of, of bad impacts and much higher 2C than 1.5C. It's not like 1.9C is an existential risk and 2.1C is, quote, Haas father said. It's more like we're playing Russian roulette with the climate. Every increase in temperature, that is, makes the risk of bad impacts that much higher. Still, scientists <clears throat> who try to clarify these nuances sometimes encounter hostility, particularly online. If you try to push back on this in any way, you get accused of minimizing the climate crisis, Gill said. I've been accused of being a shill for the fossil fuel industry. The problem with climate doom, beyond the toll that it can create on mental health, is that it can cause paralysis. Psychologists have long believed that some amount of hope... Opium, combined with a belief that personal actions can make a difference, can keep people engaged on climate change. But according to a study of researchers at Yale and Colorado State Universities, many Americans who accept that global warming is happening cannot express specific reasons to be hopeful. And it's not just Americans. Andrew Smith, a retired engineer from Yorkshire, England, is slightly turned off by the term doomer. It provokes, he says, a sense of being on the fringes of society or visions of doomsday preppers filling their bunkers with food. For me, a climate doomer is simply a person who's taken a look at the peer-reviewed science, taken stock of the natural world around them, and comes to the conclusion, he wrote in a message via Twitter. Smith believes that the world is on the track to warm four to eight degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial times. For some, however, doomism isn't permanent. Your former engineer still remembers how strongly he felt that humanity was done. He believed the IPCC and other scientists were covering up how bad the climate change actually was, and no peer-reviewed research could convince him otherwise. I think it's kind of similar to what deniers feel. I wasn't being open-minded. In 2018, he briefly considered quitting his job to travel the world, hoping he could see he could change society and the natural world collapsed. Slowly, Though, he started getting more involved in local climate groups, and when he attended a meeting in Alameda for the California City Climate Plan, something clicked. I think 
that for me was key. He said, it made me start realizing the power, power of good policy. Now, 32 years old, he has earned a master's degree in environmental science and policy and works as a climate action coordinator for the California of uh, Selmo and Fairfax. Worry, and even occasionally despair about the climate crisis is normal. Most scientists believe that without deeper cuts, the world is headed for two to three degrees of global warming, but higher temperatures are still possible if humans get unlucky with how the planet responds to higher CO2 levels. Kate Marvel, a climate scientist at NASA Goddard Institute, has said that the humans probably won't go extinct due to climate change. Not going extinct is a low bar. It's a question of risk, not known catastrophe, but finding the balance between constructive worry, that is, concern that motivates you to do something, and a sort of fatalistic doom is difficult. Nowadays, climate scientists try to emphasize with the climate change isn't a pass-fail test, every tenth of a hundredth of a degree warming matters. For his part, Yor has advice for those who are suffering from the same sort of fatalism that he has once felt. Stop engaging excessively with negative climate change content and start engaging with your community. You can be one of those voices that shows there's a support for solutions. Okay? I'm not even going to read the comments because it's probably absolutely god awful but there are so many things wrong with this article um do you do you ever go to church shannon do you see how many trucks are parked out there in front of the church how are you going to convince religious people that science is real especially where we live now how are you going to convince people to stop using their iphones going to the grocery store buying meat growing their own food Re-deindustrializing society. I mean, this is the sort of dog shit that comes out of Washington Post. Um, just brainwashing propaganda horse shit. Okay? And again, to clarify, it's not negative or positive. Science doesn't have a persona. It's reality. Okay? And so, again, like I said, I already sent this over to Nature Bats last. As if I was special. Um, in sending him that, but, uh, you know, what is there to say? Just garbage, you know? I'd sure like to go on a date with Miss Osaka, give her a mouth full of science. But she's just a reporter, a little shill, working for Washington Post and Bezos. They gotta keep the Amazon factories running, because what would the, what would the CEOs and shareholders do? What would they do with their time? They would spend less time on their yachts. Okay, great way to start the week. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.